because I don't believe in technique, I don't really use all of my voice. It's a matter of faith. Uh, mm, the theme of my paper is the tradition of the value structure in Serbian epic poem, function and meaning of, and I changed it to previous slides, uh, the subtitle, function and the meaning of text in the down discourse of tradition. Uh, Firstly, I would thank uh, my colleagues, uh, fellow vocalists, Olivia and Christopher, for such an interesting introduction. And uh, I will uh, only audience uh, give uh, to draw your uh, attention to a basic assumption in the folklore, which is easily overlooked. The study of uh, oral literature and a semantic and its meaning is closely related to the study of the overall spiritual culture of the human ecosystem, i.e. the context, as well as the specific performing and the process within a context, as the Ben Arnold's claim. Therefore, a study of the basic constitutive elements of the natural form structure and the meaning undoubtedly goes beyond the scope of literary studies and comes near technology, mythology, the status of culture, linguistic rhetorics, cognitive sciences, etc. Can you Well, you're using that technology. Is that a technology too? Uh, <laughs> could you raise your voice a little bit? Because the technology invites to reading some <laughs> of But we want to hear you well. Or you come close. Or come closer, or both. Uh, the initial dilemma is solved by returning to the this basic hypothesis, since any comprehensive discussion of the relevant aspects of oral literature must have an interdisciplinary character. The main subject of my research is the structure of the text of the Serbian and heroic poem, with special reference to the episode as the nucleus of the narrative form. The term episode is observed from both aspects, broader, as an event presented in a particular poem, and narrower as a part of the narrative, i.e. a more or less, or less completed whole, meaningful, associated with the broader whole of the text as it is defined in a dictionary of literary terms. Generally speaking, when it comes to formal features, Serbian epic poems, and especially those from the four books, uh, four books of the books of Panovic, Kalitic, and the collection, have an average of about 200 verses per poem on uh, This rather short form use, usually focuses on the main event and thus shows an exemplary but isolated episode of the epic past. This means that the single event episodes are dominant in the book's classical epics as opposed to, for example, Mahmasan epic, where there are several interconnected episodes that are not related to a single event, but to the central theme, as the Brown noticed. Also, similar situations could be repeated, motifs added from other poems, or incidental situations repeated by writing similar situations with dual central letters, or some of the uh, motifs uh, of which our respectable chairman uh, mentioned in the first. Hede Yasun used the idea of a single event episode as a criterion determining, determining the, large, the largest part of the South Slavic epic corpus as a subgenre of episodic epic. All the formally bounded, having beginning and end, each text of formal narrative poetry is a model of a boundless world, as the world often stated, like life itself after all. Nevertheless, a poem never shows the life of the hero in its entirety. Unusually, uh, usually one event is singled out, proclaimed as a heroic act, and made the subject matter of the poem. Therefore, this subject matter also has fragmentary character, or, as Paul Ricard says, by doing something, agents learn to isolate the closed system from their environment and discover the possibilities of the development inherent to the system. Such action includes any prevention, any intersection of the open certain powers and the potential of the system itself. 
In addition, boundedness of the text occurs as a result of transposing from one system to another, from language as a system that reflects the world as an unlimited reality, to the literature as a collateral modeling system or text, fixed sequence of characters, limited with beginning and end, or phonological string in sound recordings and live performances. What characterizes all texts of oral narrative poetry is a high degree of routine, uh, or conditionality, we may say, from motive, theme, plot, and formulae to the genre, condition, types of stylization, or stylistic procedures and means. This routine calls it the oral narrative poetry discourse to codify a system of rules which would, on, on the one hand, connect the given text to other text within the same discursive system. I do comply with the requirements of the genre and standards of preventive censorship. On the one, on the one uh, on the other, on the other hand, the epic discourse as a type of speech implies the way of thinking and talking in a poem, which means that it is defined by the principles of heroization and epic stylization. More specifically, it implies in a recognizable way acceptable to the, the community the modeling of the system of ethical norms, some universal existential questions, heroes, heroic and ethical deeds, wide range of emotions, moods, archetypal images, and primarily picture of the world as a whole. Episodicity, in its broader sense, can be seen as a separate exploit or event from epic biography that became the subject of a particular poem. And in this paper, it will be shown on a, a poem of Mali Redoitzer, but I will skip this part. According to the principles of epic stylization or the discourse of epic poem, it seems that the two favorite narrative patterns in this poem, the deliverance of a hero from and the marriage with obstacles come together and partially overlap or contaminate. Besides, the described episode attempts to establish itself as a central or main event with the epic biography of the character. Given that, the marriage was that very act through which the young hero, in the context of traditional cultural martial epic perception, is making a transition from one status a status of the neophyte to the full warrior status. At the same time, at a deeper semantic level, this episode has its mythical archetype. The episode of the descent into the underworld, the Senus Adit Pedros, is analogous to the metaphor of slavery and the apparent death at uh, different semantic levels, while the freeing of fertility deity or its representative is future life by appropriate uh, motives from the poem, primarily gaining a life, the, the, the return and the battle, are analogous to the end of the poem. In this way, a mythic and ritual subtext gets a new appearance and epic stylization in the context of what applied patriarchal culture and according to the principles of heroization and individualization. Therefore, Comprehension of the meaning and significance of epic poetry today is organized as a system of concentric circles, from the more general to the narrowest, and requires knowledge of the following, following levels of meaning, of meaning. The traditional cultural and belief system, verbal folklore, corpus of South Slavic epic poetry, poetics of the genre, epic discourse, circle of international themes and motives, epic biography of a given hero, Barines, and so on. That is, the meaning of a, a poem is defined by the way of thinking, by the hierarchy of spiritual values, as well as by the interpretative practice specific for the social political situation of a certain ethosocium, as Gurubit suggests. At the moment when a particular barine is performed in front of a specific audience. In this way, the overall knowledge of tradition is reflected to a lesser or greater extent 
in every specific variant, so an in interpreter of oral epic poetry is put to a special test. test. And further, I uh, attempted to show how the picture of the world is displayed in a different or by genders, but, but I skip that part and I will talk only about that. In lyrics, you know, uh, there is a cosmic tree and the uh, world is organized toward the cosmic tree. Uh, upper animals, as Olivia uh, told before, uh, are uh, clean animals, uh, animals which are uh, in the root of the cosmic tree are unclean animals. Uh, but uh, talk about the epics. Unlike the lyrics, the world of epic poems is more reduced, fragmentary, and what is especially important, anthropocentrically organized. This is confirmed by the fact that in most of the initial formulas identified by late Miriam Adetovich in the corpus of a broader syllabic material, a human activity occurs as the initial impulse that triggers a, a sequence of events. It seems that by shifting attention to the excellence of, of events and heroes, the other elements of text structure are put into the background. The hero as a typical representative of the heroic view of the world, as uh, uh, Brown formulated, <laughs> gives events in evidence about the hierarchy of values and indirectly about the world he belongs to. Besides, in his designation, he keeps the memory of the lopsy in the real world he is connected with in the inner point, since he himself is a chronotopic, as uh, Bach stated. Also, the community has a clear awareness of the homeland, i.e. our village, city, territory, country, and so on, uh, and incorporates it into the world of the poem, and that awareness is a mediator to a rhetoric picture of the world. Examining the spatial framework of phonetic poem, Keda Yasin convincingly demonstrated this. This anthropocentricity of the epic poetry is conditioned by the genre. Epics, which are among the oldest forms, in the opinion of Olaf Harald of Reidenberg, represent personal stories in their more, most archaic form. These earliest epic forms, as she claims, are built upon a funeral eulogies and lamentations over heroic acts, battles, and events of the gods and heroes. The end of the quotation. Separate heroic acts, episodes from the hero's epic biography are described in the separate points. One event, one point. Uh, they have a standard character and in conjunction with the historical facts, as the Margian noticed, been to themselves a certain number of international themes. These fragmentary episodes from the epic biography, which may belong to different heroes, are often presented in, in a surprisingly similar manner, and covered with the same plot layout. These poems have originated and lived, therefore, as the narration of significant events and heroes of the past, and as such, reach the recipients, the listeners first, and then readers. What is important is the narration itself, i.e. the subject of narration. Furthermore, whether the poem will be accepted by a community and past requirements of preventive censorship or will be rejected depends on the narration. Let's have a closer look at the poem Prince Marco and Beck Gustavi. The poem apparently falls outside the scope of the heroic epic genre. There are no heroic acts, duels, heroism, or even events. The whole poem is given in the form of a dialogue between Prince Marco and his post to both brother Beck Gustavi. In the poem, Beck invites, invites Marco to Slava, his day of family's patron saint, uh, promising to impress him with wealth, splendor, and ceremonious welcome. However, Marco indirectly rejects Beck's invitation, reminding him of an episode from the past when he attended his celebration. Further in the poem, Marco reproaches him for three 
human needs and humanities. First, he threw out the half of the house to two poor persons so as not to undermine the reputation of his table. Then, he put the upstairs closer to him and the impoverished old novels away from him. Finally, they did not invite him to the table even his parents. The poem ends with this retrospection. Beck did not give any answers, so we can assume that he was embarrassed by Marcus' reproach. Nevertheless, the poem does not fall outside the scope of this genre. Although the conflict is not given in action, it exists at the level of ver verbal confrontation of two persons with different ethical codes. Even if there is no heroic act, the poem promotes the heroic view of the world, or more precisely, human deeds, uh, and thus the ethical value system. Considering that, the moral transgressions are given in a gradational role, the last offense proves to be the greatest. The respect for parents in the Old Testament writings is set by God's commandment in the third book of Moses and in the tradition by parents undisputed authority and absolute decision-making right about all important issues related to the family. The significance of origin, clan, and good name stands out in the back second in humanity and the unviolability of the hospitality in the first. The rejection of the invitation of the violator emphasizes the importance of respecting the unwritten ethical norms. According to the poem, Mark is their barrier and exponent, but also the singer and the whole community share them. The fact that the poem is remembered and that there was a need for its repeated performance over time suggests that the traditional view of the world is occasionally abandoned or undermined by individual offenses. Therefore, Reevaluating this system of unwritten rules, the poem at the same time warns and re evaluates and thus obtains a kind of a propagandistic function. Realized as a story within a story, or how would they get to the eugenic narration? Storytelling in the poem is, is, is structured in such a way that using direct speech, get the story closer to the listeners or readers and the narrative is gradually transferred to the presentation, setting the scene and verbal staging. Such convergence and divergence, i.e. going back and uh, going back to the near or distant past, usually through retrospection, is the essence of the mental process with, which characterizes African thought. The events lose the chronological distinctness are, and are transferred to the growth of epic memories. When an episode is just a digression, i.e. a smaller fragment within a broader narrative context, in the narrower sense, in the narrower sense of the term, it has a specific function. If retardation does not represent the main subject of the poem, as is in the case of a certain number of the poems, then the interpolated episode that evokes some previous event as a pre-plot has a motivational character. It enhances the causality of events, contributes to an improved characterization of the hero, suggests the outcome, indicates the reason for hero's sickness over many years, as a punishment for a sin that he confesses before his death and redeems with a heroic act. Olivia has an excellent paper about it. And so, this is to an extent also culturally conditioned. A mythical thought is based on the awareness of the continuous connection of different events or looking for causes in the past. Or, as Lockman states, the beginning has a determinative modulation function. It is not only a testimony to the existence, but a replacement of the later category of causality. Therefore, the events presented in the poem are the cause of subsequent events. Here are also examples from Pugashvitsa, long verse folk poems, 
uh, this form of reality and dissension with the ruling dynasty was the cause of the Kosovo defeat. A hero's marriage with a fairy leads to the birth of a miraculous offspring, a future hero, etc. The overall traditional tradition functions as a reservoir of knowledge, which is used whenever it is necessary. Therefore, a step forward in the events to the events that are yet to come is possible. From cause to effect, i.e., to the future in a prospective narrative, the blessings or curses are pronounced as a reaction of the events and are always fully realized. Because of Nemanja's endowments, the whole Nemanja dynasty becomes sacred and blessed by Christian nobility, which is confirmed by a poet and the tradition in the last verse of the poem, whatever they say said, with God's help they did. The announcement of marriage between the ruler and the sister of the powerful hero will be an introduction to the epic biography of the famous hero, Prince Marco. Lydia wrote about it in the details in her book. Likewise, the consequences of the crime presented in the poem can be transferred to future generations, which further explain their theology of evil, of evil or of kinship and tribal enmity. But because the whole tradition, as well as the epic history, functions as a totality or system, thereby the episode or the presented event necessarily establishes relations with other elements of the system. Thus, the view of the world, primarily attitude of the hero, defined by the need of self-assertion <coughs> and obliging consciousness of his own heroism, value system, way of thinking, social political context in which the variety is performed, and so on, are included in the point as a kind of discourse the universe as first bit of a uh, name. Since the episode is most often a self sufficient fragment of the picture of the world, it reflects a kind of conceptual synergy uh, of the historical, ethical, and social political realities, so an interdisciplinary approach is required for its interpretation. This is also the answer to the initial question as to whether and to what extent the problem considered here coincides with this context. Are there any questions? I have a question. Thank you very much. Then, uh, can you tell, me, tell us uh, how would you form a dominant narrative uh, of this poem um, which contains uh, the basic model or relation, only one or two sentences regarding that. Uh, for example, it does struggle for something, or is this relation I will be you, I'm or something sure like that. Or which poem did you think about? Uh, in, in that uh, out of your corpus epic, uh, uh, not lyric, because you said it, what it is. I have Maximilian Brown uh, uh, taking, uh, I think, five uh, narrative, uh, basic narrative patterns uh, described at all. Uh, it is a duel, uh, one boy, uh, infidelity of a woman, uh, and uh, it comes uh, torturing. torturing. Is there any torturing? Infidelity is always of a woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> of a woman, of course. Uh, uh, male infidelity is, is not That's so important in the epic poem. Uh, uh, tragical plots are all, all uh, too. All this includes some kind of struggle. Yes, yes uh, the struggle so is. I don't think myself, uh, I can't resist. The subject is not religious things are all uh, also really involved, but then it is less heroic, more mm -hmm. moralistic. Yeah. Uh, Hede Jasson, uh, in uh, her writings, Epopeia or Martial Poetry, uh, just the struggle was uh, uh, put as uh, the main subject of all, uh, all epics. Mm -hmm. 
in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Raro, Raro, it is us and them. Always. What is the cause of the uh, foreign battle or a duel? Uh, it uh, might be different battles. A woman, a horse. Uh, for me, it is the same. Because the woman and the horse are now in the forest. Situating in the same world. Yes, that makes sense. You raised a couple of points in, in your paper. You raised the issue of ethics. Yeah. I wonder uh, if you could maybe say something more about the ethics of these poetics, for example, because I'm much more familiar with the uh, the Greek tradition, right, where Martin Bernal's study, you know, uh, Black Athena, would trace not only the, the structure of these works, poetics, but the uh, very etymologies back to kind of basic racism. It's built in, and therefore the ethics involved is precisely one of reproducing out of this reservoir, this cultural reservoir of racist cultural as well as you say, reproducing it over and over again, learning it, reproducing it, passing it down to the next tradition. So I'm wondering what, what you meant by the ethics of the poetics that you're discussing. I mentioned uh, very few. Uh, respect uh, uh, of uh, facts is uh, one of the basic uh, cultural canons. Uh, God's com commandment, you know? Book of Moses. Uh, in boy, uh, when uh, a character, I can, can say the hero, because hero always respects his parents, uh, when uh, some other character uh, doesn't uh, respect them, uh, it signifies uh, that in the society something is disturbed. Uh, uh, system of uh, uh, ethical values. Uh, what the hero makes a uh, hero in the first is a self obliging consciousness uh, about the, the uh, about the world. If someone is you know, troubled, the hero must uh, uh, interfere and must help uh, the person who is uh, in trouble. It's hard to speak about ethics in outdated terms when we speak about this culture, because uh, also the terms us and them are not equal as today. It's not defined by national, uh, by nationality or by uh, religious or by these terms that we now take as main things of ident identification. Many heroes are, for example, both Christians, but they are confronted with some other level. And when we speak also the same about the, 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 the women infidelity, the same pattern can be uh, considered both positive and negative. For example, if women betray her, her, her parents and uh, marry secretly uh, to, 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 for example, to the standing point of a Christian poet, uh, poet uh, and if she marry a Christian hero, then she is not punished. And if the same thing, the Christian woman goes uh, uh, secretly and marry uh, Turkish hero, then she is severely punished. So ethics is not is not equal always as we now think about it. And within the, within the system, it's also not consistent. It depends much on standing point. And the power of the in our days is. Different from at the social where the ones who perform it and uh, with them. Okay. Any more questions? No? Okay, so now we move to the last presentation. <laughs>